Hello everybody! The Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass has finally been announced. Yes! Finally we have DLC for this game. This is so exciting and I really cannot wait. So, as they said in the trailer, all 48 tracks will be released in separate waves of two cups. Six waves in total set to be released periodically through the end of 2023. And these are my predictions for all 40 tracks that are yet to be announced. But before we get started, we did have some criteria for this list. Apart from trying to be as unbiased as possible, we tried to make this list with the expectation that Nintendo will give every game the same amount of tracks, if not as close to it as possible. I would also like to mention our picks were based on probability of getting in the game and not our personal desires. Also, I would like to give a massive thanks to Goomba456 and my friend WarioMan64 for helping me put this list together. Goomba456's channel will be linked in the description below. Please go show him your support. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the predictions. So we see in the trailer, all of Wave 1's courses have now been revealed alongside their respective cups names. So kicking off the Golden Dash Cup, we have Paris Promenade from Mario Kart Tour, Toad Circuit from Mario Kart 7, Choco Mountain from Mario Kart 64, and Coconut Mall from Mario Kart Wii. And first in the Lucky Cat Cup is Tokyo Blur from Mario Kart Tour, followed by Shroom Ridge from Mario Kart DS, then Sky Garden from Mario Kart Super Circuit, and finally Ninja Hideaway from Mario Kart Tour. Wave 1 in its entirety releases March 18th, 2022. So as you can see from the trailer, this DLC booster pack will probably be focusing a lot on Mario Kart Tour. So for my first prediction for the Turnip Cup is New York Minute from Mario Kart Tour. I think this will be a great pick and has a large chance to get in because not only is it one of the original Mario Kart Tour tracks, it will also look beautiful in HD with all the buildings and nighttime. Next up, I predict Koopa Troopa Beach from Mario Kart 64 will make it. We picked this track because it is one of the first and most iconic beach tracks in Mario Kart and it was also one of the first tracks to make it into Mario Kart Tour. Next, I think Luigi Circuit from Mario Kart Super Circuit can make it because it is one of the harder circuit courses in the game and it is also very iconic. And finally, I think Mushroom Gorge has a super strong case to be made because of the new mushrooms that were added into Sky Garden as well as being found in the files for Mario Kart Tour. Now, kicking off the Propeller Cup, I have a fan favorite, Delfino Square from Mario Kart DS. I think this would be a strong starter because, in my opinion, it is one of the best DS tracks and it has been remade in Mario Kart Wii. Next, I predict Dino Dino Jungle from Mario Kart Double Dash. I think this track could make it in because it is a very unique and fun track. It has also been remade twice. Next, I have Ghost Valley 3 from Super Mario Kart. I think this track could get in because it has a very fun layout and it has never been remade officially in a Mario Kart game. Finishing off, I have Calamari Desert from Super Mario 64. This track will be a strong finisher and I think it is very likely to get in because it is one of the most iconic tracks in the whole series, not to mention it has already been remade in Mario Kart Tour. Now, my first prediction for the Rock Mushroom Cup is London Loop. Looking back at the Golden Dash Cup and the Lucky Cat Cup, two out of the three tour tracks were starters, and due to the simplicity of tour tracks, I think a lot of the tour tracks will be starters or enders of the cups. My next prediction is Daisy Cruiser for Mario Kart Double Dash. I think this is an almost guaranteed track due to it being super unique and very iconic. Next I have Koopa Beach 2. I think this track will make it because it made it into Mario Kart Tour, and there's only one beach track in Mario Kart 8 already, that being Cheap Cheap Beach. For a finisher, I predict Rock Rock Mountain from Mario Kart 7. I think this track will make it in because it is a fun and unique starting track, and it has a huge jump that I think will translate well into Mario Kart 8's playstyle. Due to the Moon Cup being released in the middle of the Booster Course Pass, we think Nintendo will put a lot of heavy hitter tracks in this cup. So for the starter, we picked N64 Wario Stadium because it is a fan favorite and because it has never officially made a return in a Mario Kart game. 
For the second track, we picked Riverside Park because it is simply a fun course and as well as it never having made a comeback. For the third track, we think DK Summit will make its first console comeback since 2006 because we think Wave 3 will release sometime late 2022 and it will be a great fit for the holiday theme. And finally, we think the fan favorite Waluigi Pinball is pretty much guaranteed. The outcry for not only the track, but just the music over the years, it being so good that it has even made a comeback in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, makes this track locked in for our top 5 most guaranteed tracks to make a comeback in the DLC. Now, first in the Apple Cup, I picked Mushroom Bridge from Mario Kart Double Dash. I think this track will be a strong starter because it's relatively difficult, and while being kind of short, it's also very iconic with the big bridge at the end. Next, we pick Yoshi Falls from Mario Kart DS. We think this track is very likely because it is unique for how simple it is and the big egg in the middle. Next, we protect Berlin Byways because, in my opinion, it's one of the better Mario Kart Tour tracks. And for a finisher, we picked Shy Guy Bazaar. I think this track has a high chance to make it in because not only is it very fun, but it's also very unique. Now, for the Boomerang Cup, we actually have a lot of heavy hitters in this cup, too. So up first, for the Boomerang Cup, we have Airship Fortress from Mario Kart DS. I think this track is almost guaranteed as well, due to it being super unique and very fun. Next, we picked another fan favorite track, Koopa Cape from Mario Kart Wii. I think this track is also almost guaranteed because it is a fan favorite track, and it has also only ever been remade once, and never on a home console. Next we have another great track, Mako Woohoo from Mario Kart 7. I think this track is very likely because it is super unique in the same vein as Mount Wario, and the fact that it has never been remade adds to the probability. And to finish off, we picked Sunset Wilds. I picked this track because it is a very fun course with a sorta kinda gimmick, and it has also been ported to Mario Kart Tour, which I think raises its chances significantly. Real quick, I would like to mention, from Wave 5 and onward, is where we really started to put the quote-unquote harder tracks, as if the cups progressively get harder like in any other Mario Kart game. But anyway, our first pick for the Feather Cup is Vancouver Velocity. I think this track will make it in because it has a pretty unique layout for tour tracks. It also feels much more open than other tour tracks, making it feel much more like a traditional Mario Kart track. Also, it's just real fun to play on. Next up, we have Rosalina Ice World from Mario Kart 7. I think this is the, one of the most unique and fun ice tracks in all of Mario Kart. It has never been remade, and it also made the jump to Mario Kart Tour, boosting its likelihood. Next, I put Mario Circuit 2 from Super Mario Kart. As much as I would like to have seen Mario Circuit 3 here, I had to give it to Mario Circuit 2. And the fact that it did get brought to Mario Kart Tour. And finally, ending off this cup, we have another fan favorite track, Maple Treeway from Mario Kart Wii. Arguably being one of the best tracks in all of the series, in our opinion, it is also almost guaranteed. Personally, I think if they don't bring this track over, it would be a huge missed opportunity to bring back one of the best tracks in the series. Now, starting off the Double Cherry Cup, we picked DK Pass from Mario Kart DS for simply being a super fun, iconic, and quite unique snow course. You could even say that DK Pass inspired tracks like DK Summit, which pretty much just adds more to it, and Mount Wario, which takes those ideas to a whole new level. Next up, I picked Los Angeles Labs from Mario Kart Tour. I think this track has a super good chance to make it in because it is also quite unique for a tour track, and it's also pretty surprisingly fun for how short it is. Next up, we picked Cheap Cheap Island from Mario Kart Super Circuit. We picked this track due to its uniqueness for being a beach course, as well as it being given a beautiful remake in Mario Kart Tour. And to round out this cup, we picked SNES Bowser Castle 2 for its unique layout, as well as it being one of the few Bowser Castle tracks that have not made a comeback yet on a home console. Now, to start off the final two cups in the DLC, we picked Wario Coliseum from Mario Kart Double Dash. We think this would be a strong starter and have a large chance of getting in because it is a super unique in its layout and design. It is also the only official Nintendo made track to have two laps. And if you don't count Mount Wario or Maka Woohoo, it has the least amount of laps out of any track. It also has never made a comeback, and I think it has so much potential in a game like Mario Kart 8. 
In my opinion, it is a must-have track. Next, we have a great scary track, Fancy Boardwalk. I think this track has a very high chance to make it in because it is a staple among the scary type tracks in Mario Kart. I also think this track has a lot of potential if any changes are made to it. Next we have Vanilla Lake 2, one of the hardest tracks in Super Mario Kart. We think this track could make it in because it has never made a console comeback as well as it making it into Mario Kart Tour. Capping off this cup, we picked GBA Bowser Castle 3. We think this track could make it in because of its super fun layout. It also made it into Mario Kart Wii back in 2006, making it one of the most fun high-level courses in the game, as well as that skyrocketing its popularity. Now for the final cup in the booster course pass, starting off the Blue Shell Cup, I picked Dry Dry Ruins for Mario Kart Wii. I think this track has so much potential in a game like Mario Kart 8, as well as it being one of the most unique desert tracks in the whole series, it has also been found in the files for Mario Kart Tour, boosting its probability. Following that, we picked a fan favorite GC and DK Mountain. Other than this track being super unique, I also think this track has an insane amount of potential in Mario Kart 8. DK Mountain has also recently been discovered to be making its third appearance in a Mario Kart game in Mario Kart Tour's files. Real quick, just as a disclaimer, I could not come up with a Bowser Castle track to use, so for the sake of keeping our previously set rules unbroken, I went with N64 Bowser's Castle. Now. I think that any of the more modern Bowser Castle tries can make it in, but I really couldn't make the list work in the way that I think it really would any other way. So I think this track does have a high chance to get in, but you can think of this Bowser Castle as a placeholder for any of the other castle tracks. Now I think N64 Bowser Castle can make it in because it's super iconic for a Bowser tr Castle track being one of the first 3D Bowser Castles and paving the way for the rest of the Bowser Castles after it. Now for the final track in the booster course pass, I predict Rainbow Road for Mario Kart 7. Now I think any of the other more modern Rainbow Roads could make it in for a final track, but without a doubt, I think Mario Kart 7's Rainbow Road has the highest chance. Without a doubt, it's the most unique Rainbow Road and it has the most amount of potential. Without a doubt, it's the most unique out of the Rainbow Road tracks and I think it has a lot of potential. Not to mention, it is in Mario Kart Tour. Overall, I think Mario Kart 7's Rainbow Road has the highest chance to make it and in. And that concludes our list. Now, this was my first video that was planned out and scripted, so it took a lot of time, a lot longer to create than planned, and it took a lot of work and planning. So, due to this, please give me any feedback in the comment section below, as well as let me know if I got any info wrong in the video at all. With that said, this video was super fun to make, and I do plan on doing more scripted videos like this, so let me know what you think about that. I would also like to give another massive thanks to Goomba456 and WarioMan64, who stayed by my side almost an entire weekend helping me plan this video, as well as giving me any encouragement with snags I hit while editing. And again, I will link Goomba's channel in the description below. But yeah, those are all my predictions. At the time of finishing this video, there are a little under 3 weeks until Wave 1 releases, so I really can't wait, and plan on more Mario Kart videos coming out in the future. But anyway, that concludes my video, so be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and peace!